today I will be presenting about cash flow, which is the way you can pay in to smart contracts without passing in. So I'm Sarawit Suryakhan, I'm the CTO of Bank Protocol, and we are a decentralized data oracle protocol, and to get data from our oracle, you've got to pay some in. <coughs> that's why we are building gas wall. So, the first question would be, how do you pay E to smart contracts right now? It's pretty simple. You have a payable function, right? The function, this function gets secret data. You just call it, it checks whether you pass enough E, and if, if, it, if you do, it returns you secret data. So, as Bob, you call a smart contract, that needs secret data, you pass up E, and that E is passed along to the contract, it returns secret data, happy. But what happens if you know Bob calls a contract and that contract needs enough to call two contracts and all those require E. Now all the contracts needs to uh, accept E and then spin the E around, right? And Bob also needs to know how much E you need to pay. And that's very messed up. So it would be better if Bob just called the contract and each of the contract basically uh, takes E from Bob directly. Just like the way you call contract right now, the contract consumes gas and it charges the transaction originator directly. So here comes a uh, gas wall. So you may probably, you can probably guess it. A gas wall is basically a combination of gas token and Uniswap, swap. Right? It's built in Ethereum where you can you know, connect permissionless protocol together to get more useful things. So as a warning, uh, gas, gas token is like something that may not work in the future. The Ethereum Foundation, they are working on the state rent proposal, for example, and that may make gas token not useful in the future, and that also means gas walk will not work too. But with that, let's just jump in. So gas token, you can go to the link, gastoken.io, that's the contract address. But essentially, gas token is an ESC20 that you can mint by spending some gas, right? You, you allocate storage, you get the gas token, and when you burn the token, you get some gas refund to save you from some gas cost in the future. And that's essentially gas token. And this swap, that's the link, uh, you guys probably know about it. Uh, it's a magical curve that if you send some ETH to the contract, it returns to ESC20 token. And if you send ESC20 token to the curve, it returns to ETH. So with gas swap interface, you have a mean function basically uh, takes the amount of ETH you want to, to have and it means to the ETH spend some gas and the burn function. So to mint uh, ETH, you just mint gas swap, you sell it to the swap. And to burn, you just sell the ETH and then you get a gas token and just burn the gas token. So now instead of Bob needing to pass around the ETH, each contract can just call mint function of gas swap and then there's no ETH needing to pass around, nothing needs to be payable and Bob just pay more gas. So now it becomes simpler to write the app that needs to pay E, right? You don't need to make everything payable, you don't need to pass E around. And it can also help with gas cost stabilization because now if you have a deep market of gas token, gas cost should become more stable. The bad thing is that it's very inefficient right now to make gas you to make gas token, you pay a lot more than when you get when you refund. And it's also not future proof, as I said earlier. So that's it, thank you.